Hello, my name is Miriam, also known as Hipster the Artist, coming to you from Luke's, aka Tampa, Florida. I'm going to walk you through today and we're going to do the Zentangle art method, which I learned at Moffitt Cancer Center's Arts and Medicine Studio about eight, nine years ago. And I use it as a daily therapeutic and meditative practice. It was developed by Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas. And um, what I love about it is that it is yoga for the mind and helps me in, in various ways. And so we're gonna go through the um, eight basic steps. I'm gonna talk about those. Then we're going to do an actual uh, Zentangle art piece using tangles. So thank you for joining me. So let's talk about the eight basic steps. First, there's gratitude and appreciation. It's the first thing we always do. Second, we'll be doing some what are called corner dots. Third, we'll create a border, a string, tangle or tangles, which are the actual patterns. Then we'll do some shading with pencil. We'll initial and sign because we are all artists and creators and creative. And then we'll appreciate at the end. What are the tools you need for this entangle art method? You need any piece of paper. And by the way, any piece of paper will do. We like to call, we like to call them tiles and they are really anywhere from a three inch to about a four and a half inch tile. You can easily take an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and fold it once, fold it a second time, and then you'll have these quote unquote tiles. You need a pencil. Any pencil will do. Graphite pencil is best. You'll need a pen. Any pen will do in whatever color of choice. Working in uh, black, black ink today. And then you'll need a blending stump or a Q-tip will work just as well. But if you can get a blending, blending stamp, also known as a tortillon, um, it's great at moving red. So first thing I wanna do is just take a deep breath, get centered and say I'm grateful for the opportunity to teach you about the Zentangle art method. Second, we take our pencil and we put a dot in each of the four corners or each of the 90 degree, 90 degree angles of the top. And then we create a border and we create a border or what I like to call an invisible border. Mine's gonna be straight or not to create what's considered an invisible grid or invisible, invisible, excuse me, fence. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Then we do what's called a string. And a string is similar to, um, the best description of it is if when you order a pizza at a pizza, pizza restaurant, when you, when they put the pizza in the oven, it is one whole pie. And then when you order the size, it is sliced into different quadrants. That is what we do with a tile. We create a string to split the tile into two quadrants or three or four in whatever way you would wanna draw that string. And now we're gonna move into a tangle pattern. And today we're going to actually work on two different patterns. The first one we'll do is crescent moon. So we'll start along one of our border, invisible border. And I'm creating what are called, they look like ladybugs, or they look like a half moon against 
the border that we created and the center part of our string. That is the first part of this tangle pattern, once again, called crescent moon. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do what's called an aura. And what I'd like to do um, with, an, with all auras is that they're highlighting or going next to the stroke or the line that preceded what we just drew. So in this case, I drew all these. I'm going to start in one of the corners. And once again, I'm auroring or following the stroke, whether it's straight line, curve, straight, the preceding line. The thing about this method, this therapeutic art method, is that if you make, and we don't like to say mistakes, but if you make mistakes, there are opportunities and they are to be left there. This isn't about the end product. This is about the therapeutic, restful, zen process that we're doing. So when I come back, I do not connect the line. I continue to follow once again, the curved or straight line that I previously drew. This starts to create a nice rhythm. And in this case, we start to see a ripple. Now, the beauty of drawing patterns in this repetition is I'm starting to get into a deeper breath. I'm starting to get into a really restful present moment state where I don't hear my surroundings. And that's the beauty of a therapeutic art process. By the way, for the sake of time, I am not, I'm going faster than I would normally go because I would like to keep this succinct and have you actually be able to do two patterns with me. Another thing that we do that can turn patterns into, in our abstract art here, into a more two-dimensional form is by adding additional strokes over the lines that we previously drew. And I'm going to show you right now why I absolutely love working on tiles. It's portable. Put it in my back pocket. I can put it in my purse. I can rotate the small tile here. Okay. I have a center space in here. I can fill it in with ink. I can also fill in within each of these little crescent moons or half moons or little ladybugs. I can fill it with ink or I can fill it with additional patterns. So for example, I could also fill in with color. if I wanted to add some color. But right now, what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to do what's called the four line stroke series. And all I'm going to do is shift where I start the stroke by rotating my tile in different directions. So you'll see that I'm doing some grid patterns in here. If you saw me do more than four lines, 
I got so zenful that I just started moving. And since there are no mistakes in this therapeutic art process, it's okay. It's about letting go, finding breath, finding peace and calm in a joyful art application. So here's that piece and we'll come back to doing more in a minute. The next pattern we're doing is called Mukha. I also share the names of the patterns because you can follow the, find these online, um, Pinterest, YouTube, um, and find many more patterns too. So we're gonna do Mukha. You saw some line patterns here. You saw some, or grid, you saw some more fl fluid movement patterns here with the strokes work. I don't like dancing with your pen. Is that what I like to say? Mukha follows the same stroke that we did over here when we started our crescent moons. But the line we're working against is actually the curved line that we started with over here. And then what we do, we can make these, once again, the thing about the Zentangle art method, it's different from doodling, uh, different from mandala work in the course of how we're working it today on a, on a tile is the repetition of those strokes in an abstract free form. And what I mean by that is that I'm controlling the rhythm, the size of the strokes I'm making within the patterns based on how I'm feeling today. So for me, I'm no longer able to dance due to disability I have in the manner in which I used to dance. And so these types of patterns for me make me feel like I'm moving and dancing. And if I had music on, it would make me feel that way even more. So this pattern with Mukha, once again, like a frowny face, and then we attach, once again, the similar line stroke, but each of these particular repetition of the pattern is based on the size I wanted to create. Best example, here's a smaller version of that pattern. Here I go to make a very exaggerated form of that pattern or a larger form of that pattern. And as I said, they don't necessarily have to be large. They can also be small. Once again, the pencil that we originally drew this with to create the string is somewhat now hidden. So I love this pattern. It's once again for me, I feel like I'm have movement and dance with the flow of the rhythm, the stroke of my hand, and the watchful view of my eye in the center point of where I'm starting from. You don't have to fill all your space up on a piece of centangle at all. So there's the actual two tiles, um, excuse me, one tile and two patterns. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move into some shading, which is we did the border, the string, the tangles, two tangle patterns. Now we're going to do the shade. So I'm looking at my tile, not knowing which side is top or bottom because this is abstract art. And I'm going to just take some pencil. I'm going to use my graphite pencil and start with some rounding strokes within these ripples valleys, I like to call them, in the pattern.
you can see them. If you were to take a pen and start to see where they are, almost like using the pen as a, a guide point ruler to find these ripples, valleys. If, you, if I was to flip it up, peaks like mountain peaks, if I flip it down, it's like a valley or what you might consider a ripple in the ocean. So then I take my tortillon in a round motion. Then I start to bring shade or turn the abstract art into a more three-dimensional piece with depth. And I can do that by filling in. I can do that by shading. Thickening lines and see how the tortillon moves the lead. The other thing uh, that I would like to mention is I mentioned the Q-tip earlier. If you can't find tortillons or you're in a quick need and you're like, I, you know, just not able to get to an art place or art store to get the tortillon or order it online, until you do, just Work with a Q-tip same way, lightly press down. It works better on art paper, by the way, uh, or drawing paper or mixed media paper than it would on copy paper. So let's take a look at Mooka here and maybe where I might want to add some shading to it. And I hope you can see where the shading appeared on the crescent moon and just gave it a whole new light and a whole new depth. Um, so with Mooka, I'm going to just do a couple of, I'm going to do some round circular strokes on every one, every other one, excuse me, of the bottom of Mukta on this particular one. So I'm going to show you just a couple of different ways. So here, once again, I'm moving the lead in a circular motion. It's okay if you go into the other one. This is not about perfection. This is about getting in touch with a therapeutic practice that really gives you relaxation, slows the mind down. There's another way I could add some shading. I'll go along the edge of the right side of this mocha stroke or mocha movement. Once again, you wouldn't be moving much slower in your practice. <laughs> I'm, uh, for the sake of a very succinct an introduction to Zentangle and the, and the method itself, I'm just giving you some starting points for the method and an introduction to it. And you spell Zentangle, stop for a moment, Zentangle. I like to say through the tangle patterns and the repetition is how we find the Zen through this therapeutic art process. Get back to Muka, finish her out. And then we're just going to move into a filling in, a filling in technique to show you what I mean about how not only shade brings it into different dimensional forms. Once again, I like to work in a circular stroke, mainly because work, work, if I work left and right, I would not necessarily be getting as much, well, actually I would be potentially uh, ripping the paper since this is acid-free uh, archival art paper. So it's one of the things that's different about it. Okay, so we've done some shading, bring out some of this lead into this really nice 
the white space we left. So let's do some filling in, okay? So one of the things about filling in is you can use the pen that you, that I just mentioned here, okay? Um, or you can use a thicker pen. And right now I'm just actually going to get a thicker pen for the sake of, um, once again, time. I wanna make sure that I can show you some of these. So I'm gonna go back real quick to Crescent Moon. So I'm going into the, inside the original Crescents that we created. Here's, here's a great example of what the Zentangle method has taught me. Here is a pen that's lost some of its mojo, right? <laughs> but what's beautiful about that is I love, I'm gonna let it go, let it go, and just use the fact, use the pen in its current state. It's running out of ink, but that there's still ink here. So I don't wanna waste the pen. So here's just a great example of how filling in works. You go into with your pen, gray in this particular case. It's, um, you know, a, I'm using a black pen, any pen would do. Um, to fill in these areas. And once again, starting to change, as you can see, the look of the tile with the shading, with the filling in through a two dimension and three dimension. And once again, this isn't about the exact process in terms of for example, it is about the eight step method, therapeutic eight step restful Zen method, but it's not about necessarily starting at the beginning and going, oh, I want my tile to look a particular way. I want my tile to be in this perfect piece of art. That's not really uh, this method. So, you know, we've created our tile here. And since we have some of that original lead that we started with, I'm going to shade along the outer, remove the lead that I originally put in, in the very beginning with the, with the border that we made and use that lead too. People ask, do I, do I uh, erase the, no, we don't use erasers, rulers, protractors, anything like that, straight edges and disentangle because it's about really the, 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 uh, the actual trusting the process and what comes out in the end is yours and yours alone. And even uh, what you see here may not be exactly what happens in the piece that you're doing. So lastly, we want to initial and sign. I sign my art as hipster. You don't have to date it, put the date on the back of your art. I like to date mine just because I like to see what I did that day. So there is a Zentangle pile. I take these with me instead of waiting in waiting rooms at night before I go to bed to slow my mind down. Going in and filling small little first open space of the line we did. So it's just a great way for me to relax, unwind, slow myself down, whatever method I need to. And in this particular case, it's an art method. And once again, I do this daily, it helps me in a lot of ways. And I'm gonna now sit with the final step, which is to appreciate the piece. Once again, knowing that anything is possible, one stroke at a time, 
I hope that this art form is meant to relax, bring you joy, be a no judgment art piece or art technique, excuse me. And the piece in the end is an abstract way of expressing yourself, your own stroke, your own movement, and bring your own hand to eye movement, deciding which part is up, which part is down, as you can see. The thing about abstract art is neither one is correct. It's where you feel it's that moment. Invest in a small little sketchbook and do some of your own pieces. For the meditative effects and yes, you can use it to make some amazing art too, but this is the eight step method, the authentic original zenful tangle process. As a therapeutic art. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it.